Hi, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Fidelis Fun Features, where we showcase some of the more advanced features of Abacus in a fun and interesting way. Today, Dr. Rob Hurlson, co-founder and chief engineer of Fidelis, will be getting us in the mood for Valentine's Day by virtualizing Cupid's arrow using the ductile damage feature. We hope you enjoy and happy Valentine's Day. Hi there, everybody. A little bit of background on the method that we'll be using today as always. So this time we'll be running an explicit analysis and again, utilizing the ductile damage feature in Abacus so that the arrow can actually pierce through the heart as we expect. This feature allows us to prescribe a reduction in both the yield strength and the elasticity as the strain increases beyond a predefined threshold. Eventually, the element will reach zero load carrying capability and at that point, it will be removed from the analysis, both analytically and visually. All right, so it's been a while since we've done one of these, but we're gonna start off as we always do by making the parts ourselves. And so first we're gonna create a shell planer, uh, which will be deformable, and we're gonna use a thousand uh, millimeter uh, canvas, if you will. And we're gonna call this the heart that we're gonna shoot the arrow through first. So we're going to use the kind of semi uh, circle draw feature. We're going to start off with negative uh, 100. And we're going to draw a circle around there and it's going to go a little bit past so we can draw the heart. Same thing on the other side. So this is going to be 100. And same thing here. And we're going to go to the same location if we can there. Now we just have to get some lines to extend the heart down. And there we go, we have a heart to shoot our arrow through. Next part is obviously gonna be the arrow, and that's gonna be a solid part, which will be an extrusion. And so this one's gonna take a little bit of time to build. So um, I'm going to use the line feature for the most part here. I'm going to say negative 150 and 2.5. So it's going to be a five millimeter uh, arrow and it's actually going to have a square section to it. Uh, I'm going to then say 150 and 2.5. And I'm going to draw myself a little arrowhead. Something like that. And we're going to reflect this part. So that's why I'm only doing half of it. On the back end... Uh, I'm going to go for the tail, negative 160, and then 10. And I'm going to go uh, negative 165, 10, negative 155, 2.5. Oops, what did I miss there? And then negative 160, 2.5. Negative 170, 10. Negative 175, uh, 10. Negative 165, 2.5. Negative 170, 2.5. Negative 180, 10. Negative 180, Five, ten, and then negative 175, 2.5. And we'll just draw this line down to the base there. Oops, didn't quite catch it. Now we'll just pop that down to negative 175, zero. Okay, and then to draw our mirror, we need to make a line like this. And then we can use the uh, oops mirror feature down here. We're going to copy our part. We're going to use this mirror line and we're going to copy everything. And then we end up with a perfect looking arrow. The arrow is going to be, as I said, five millimeters square cross section. And so there we go, we have an arrow. And now what we want to do here is we want to split the arrow into the wood parts and the metal parts. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is via a uh, partition. So we're going to do point and normal, and we're going to do it like this. Same thing down here. Oops. 
um, I'm going to use this point and the normal here. And then down here, we're going to say point and normal this way. OK. So for our materials, we're actually going to make three materials. The first one will be the heart material. And that's going to have a density of, um, let's see, 1 e to the minus 10. It's going to have an elasticity value of uh, Young's modulus of 10 megapascals and 0.3 Poisson's ratio. It's going to have some plasticity in it, which is for our damage evolution and damage initiation. And that's going to look like 1, 0, 1 0.5, 0 0.01, 2, 0 0.05 and then 2.5 and 0.1. Delete this row. Next, we're going to use um, some damage uh, parameters. So we're going to use damage for ductile materials and we're going to use ductile damage. We're going to have a fracture strain of 1 E minus 5. Triaxiality and strain rate are not necessary here. And then we're going to go with uh, a displacement at failure, which allows our damage to evolve of um, 5 e to the minus 5. Um, that should be all of our material properties for our heart material. So next we can move on to our steel. Oops, and for that we're going to use a uh, density of 8.5 e to the minus 9. And all we need for this one is the elastic material properties, which are uh, a Young's modulus of 200,000 200, and Poisson's ratio of 0.3. So that's the steel built. Uh, finally, we're going to build a wood material for the arrow. And that's going to look like a density of 1 e to the minus 10. And the elasticity will be uh, 10,000 megapascals with, again, a 0.3 Poisson ratio as essentially a placeholder. OK, so we've got our materials. We next need to make our sections. Um, and so we're going to do first heart and that is going to be a shell section and it's going to be two millimeters in thickness and it's going to use the heart material that we just built secondly we're going to build the steel section that'll be solid and again we just choose steel finally we'll build a wood section again that'll be solid and that's going to use the wood material. So now we can start uh, giving out our materials to the model. And so we're going to say, uh, I think we're going to call the, all these parts. Oops. Uh, let's just do that again. We're going to call this part, this part, and this part steel. And we're going to call the main bow wood. We're also going to call the heart, obviously, material heart, and that's already set up nicely. For the assembly, we're obviously going to put both parts into the assembly, and then we're going to need to move them around a little bit. So what we're going to do is first we're going to twist the heart by 20 degrees about the y-axis. And so if we do this and then 20, now our heart is in the right position. We then need to move the arrow. And what we're going to do is we're going to offset it along the z-axis um, by, let's see, about 50 millimeters. And actually, we want to do it in the negative direction. And then we also want to move uh, this in the 
x direction so we'll move that and i think we'll move that 500 millimeters in the negative x direction just so that it starts off a good distance away from the heart itself so that looks pretty good like that okay so now we've got our uh, parts in place we can go to our step and for the step we want to take a dynamic explicit step and we're going to run this for only actually 0.02 of a second so two hundredths of a second because the thing is going to be going so fast uh, we're just going to aim for a target time increment 1e to the minus 6 and that should be okay For our interaction, we simply need to define a general contact, which is really easy to do in Abacus. Uh, we'll make our general contact interaction property. So that can essentially just be um, left blank and it'll use all the Abacus defaults. So now we've got an interaction property to choose and we'll just use that one. So that should be all our interactions done actually in this case. In our load module, we're going to want to um, fix the edges of the heart so that it doesn't fly away when it gets struck by the arrow. And so we're just going to fix the edges of the heart using the encaster. And we're going to apply a, a predefined field of velocity to the arrow. And that's going to be uh, 70,000 millimeters per second 70 million 70 meters a second is about how fast an arrow is traveling uh, from my research and so we've got the arrow now and then we finally need to mesh all the parts and so um, what i'm going to do is use uh, about a 10 millimeter mesh for the heart and just let it mesh itself it's not too big of a deal uh, in this example and then for the arrow, we actually want to use, I believe, five millimeters gives us quite a nice mesh here. Yep, so that looks really good. All right, and to make sure that we have enough output and also to make sure that we can delete the elements visually, we're going to go to the uh, field output request and say we want actually 100 uh, different outputs. And we also need to go to the state field user time uh, box and go down to status and turn that on and what that'll do is allow the elements to be uh, kind of disappeared visually and so now we're ready to make a job and we're going to call the job valentines and we're going to use some parallelization so the job runs quickly uh, eight cpus in this case and then we are ready to submit the job all right, so our analysis is complete and we're ready to view the results. And so what you can see is that we get the results here of uh, the analysis. It's run for a full uh, 0.02 seconds. And if we wanna look at say the stresses and make sure it's all working, we can do that. We can visualize it with a video. And so we can see it smash through the heart exactly as we expected and get a kind of a rippling of the heart since that heart is kind of a softer material which is kind of cool cool looking uh, we can also see things like the velocity of our arrow so we've got the 70 um, meters per second arrow um, but what we really want to do is make this look like an arrow going through a heart right so we're going to uh, visualize the materials for colors you can see it just gives us these default materials so what we want to do is we want to go and change those colors and so we want the heart obviously to be bright red uh, we want the steel to be kind of a gray color and then the wood uh, we're going to need to make something like a, like a brownish color up here like something like this okay and then so now we've got something that looks just like the teaser video and we can see that when we animate that now, it looks really cool. The arrow goes right through the heart, piercing through it, and uh, exactly what we were looking for with the element deletion and the ductile damage methodology. So I hope that gave you uh, some useful insight into how to use ductile damage. And uh, also it's kind of a fun tutorial uh, for Valentine's Day and 
hope you all have a really great Valentine's Day and we'll see you next time for the next Fidelis Fun Features.